Hey guys, it's Angel. I'm guessing I could say anything right now and you wouldn't even hear me because you're completely distracted by my nails. And it's understandable. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Okay, now that I got your attention with my terrible singing, these magical hollow flakies are called Stardust from Twinkle Tea. And for my tutorial, I'm gonna use a combination of regular polish and gel polish because that worked best for me and gave the most hollow fire. But I know some of you are wondering if you can use these with regular polish and yes, you can, but I cannot lie. <laughs> I found regular tab coat dulls the hollow a little bit. On the left are the flakies burnished directly into gel. I think I worked it a little bit too much because they kind of disintegrated and it just looks like regular hollow powder a little bit. And then in the middle is over regular polish with a gel top coat and then on the right is over regular polish with a water-based top coat to not dull the finish and then regular top coat on top of that. But I feel like it's still, it doesn't look as good in, as the one in the middle with the gel top coat, so I decided to go with that. And this video is a part one of new Twinkle Tea products that they sent me. These six new chrome powders are currently available and I'll have a swatch video for these in a few more days after this one. Spoiler alert, they are beautiful and super easy to use. Since I'm a needy YouTuber, this is where I beg you to subscribe and turn on notifications and like my video and leave me a 147 random emoji comment or I'll die. Long ass intro is over. Now let's slather our fingers in some hollow. For my base coat, I used Oont Peel Off Base Coat because gel polish is just basically a bitch to remove. For me, my typical wear time when I combine Oont with gel polish is probably about a week before like the edges start to get a little bit funky, but it really depends on, I don't know, it depends on a lot of things. How you treat your nails, how often you submerge them in water, etc, etc. For my black base, I went with Twinkle Tea Vibing, which yes, this is a regular polish that I'm going to put a gel top coat on top of. I just found the flakies applied better over polish, but then looked better when you put a gel top coat on top of them. Does that make sense? And then I busted out my good friend Yellow Stopper. You guys know that I love this. This is no surprise. If you're new here, I like to use this with my powders and different sort of flaky nail things because it stays tacky even after it's dry. So I applied it to the nail and then I probably let it dry for about 45 seconds before I applied the flakies. I'm finding lately that I really like using a makeup wedge sponge to apply powders and apparently it works for these flakes too. So I just dip it into the pot and pick up a little bit of the flakes. And then you gently tap the flakes onto the nail. As you can see, I'm, oh my God, it's still a little bit wet, whoops. So I keep going off screen because I'm picking up a little bit more flakes and you wanna be gentle here. I definitely learned my lesson. You will see at one point coming up that I was a beast and pressed a little bit too hard, but just be gentle and tap them on. Now, I don't think that I had to use yellow stopper in this case. I think you could get away with applying a layer of clear nail polish and letting it mostly dry and then doing this and just being gentle not to dig into the semi-wet polish. So I don't really think you need yellow stopper for this, but I just use it because I love it and I know that it works. And then after I got complete coverage, I noticed that the flakes were kind of sticking up a little bit in some parts. They were mostly flush to the nail, so I got the genius idea to just rub it with my finger. <sighs> but then I rubbed too hard. That sounds gross. <laughs> but the polish was still tacky, so I was just able to sponge on a little bit more flakes and cover it up. Shh, no one has to know. And then I attempted to get off the excess with a brush like I do with powders, but it said, nah. I'm not going anywhere. So then I busted out my other friend's scotch tape to get it off. And honestly, this is a completely extra step. You don't need to do this if you're using gel top coat because once you cure it, you could just wash your hands and then it's gonna come off like, duh, angel. So my first reaction after seeing this finished nail was, oh my God, I could probably die in these nails. Like these, I wanna be buried in these. These are so beautiful. So for the other nails, I used basically the same technique and I was able to do it much faster than the first nail. I would say it probably took me like a minute to do each nail once I got the technique down. If you're not filming them, it's gonna go a lot quicker. 
but I still didn't learn my lesson on this nail and I pressed too hard and dented it. But again, it was easily fixed by just going back over it. So the keys are to be gentle. You don't have to move super fast because the flakes are going to stick to the polish even if it's more dry than wet. Before going in with my top coat, I took a little orange stick and kind of ran it around the edge of my nail to make sure I got like the loose flakes off because you're gonna wanna get a good seal on this. Like you're not gonna want the little flakes sticking out from underneath the top coat cause that's gonna make the nail peel faster and chip and just, you don't want that. Once all nails were covered, I could apply my gel top coat. This one is from Bundo Monster. I did notice when applying the gel that it kind of wanted to break apart on the nail. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it just didn't want to stick to the hollow flaky material. So all I did was just go over the nail a couple times to make sure I had an even coat on there. Then I cured for 60 seconds in my gel lamp and this view of my lamp is pretty much useless to you. So I noticed while I was using the flakies that they kind of stuck to everything. This is my top coat bottle. And then this was the brush that I was using to try to brush off the flakes. Yeah, wow, I mean, it looks pretty. I'll, I'll give it that. And the flakies were sticking to the purple chrome nails that I had on my other hand. And I was just gonna wash it off when I was finished. But then I was like, no, why would I waste this? This actually looks really pretty. So the other hand that I had the hollow mani on, I noticed on the back of my fingers, I had just a ton of excess flakies. So I just rubbed it on top of my nails. I didn't have a pattern in mind. It's just kind of like a half-assed gradient, but I thought it looked really cool in the end. And then I just added more top coat and boom accidental nail art when life gives you lemons you make purple chrome hollow nails that's not a saying but it should be so that completes my hollow flaky tutorial and all i gotta say is you guys really have to see these in person it is so beautiful. I've seen a few people use these on Instagram and I was like, wow, that looks really intense, but seeing it in person, oh my goodness. And if I was in a life or death situation and someone said you have to pick either hollow pigment powder or hollow flakies, we're gonna kill you if you don't decide, I would pick hollow flakies. And like I mentioned earlier, there will be a part two, sort of a part two video to this one with the six new pigment chrome powders that should be up in a few days need a youtuber turn on notifications and you can also follow me on instagram snapchat and twitter at twy underscore star thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video uh, bye bye